Hello, my name is Caroline Howard. I'm the clinical pharmacist at Carolina Advanced Health. And today I'm going to spend a few minutes going over the second part of smoking cessation, which focuses on the medications that we use. I'd like to remind you that medications are very helpful for quitting. Stopping cold turkey is really hard, but using a medication can double your chance of quitting successfully. You can either use one medication or a combination of medications together. First, we're going to cover nicotine replacement therapy, um, which is, like it says, you know, replacing the nicotine, which is what your body has become um, addicted to. So the nicotine patch um, is the first thing that we'll cover. It provides continuous nicotine replacement. It only needs to be applied once a day. Um, since it does, reply, um, does supply a steady stream of nicotine, you may find that you need something else for cravings, um, which we'll talk about later. When you're picking out the dose, this is something you can just buy. Um, it may be covered by your insurance, but you would need a prescription for that, or you can you know, just buy it at the store. You're going to choose the dose based on the number of cigarettes that you're smoking, and then you gradually reduce the dose um, over time. And there's instructions um, on the boxes of those for how to do that. It's important to rotate the sites. Um, you may develop some mild skin rash or irritation. Sometimes it disrupts sleep. Um, if that becomes a problem, you can remove the patch at bedtime, but only do that if you're having problems with sleep. And do not cut the patches because this could provide, um, it could dump out the nicotine in there. Um, so that would not be a good thing. Nicotine gum. Um, this can be helpful if you have um, kind of oral cravings for a cigarette. It's nice because you can adjust the dose easily um, by changing the number of pieces of gum you need every day. It's important to know that you do not use it like regular gum. Often people will use it like regular gum and find that it's not effective. Um, that's because you're not getting the right dose of nicotine. It's going to take about 30 minutes to use up a whole piece of gum. We use the chew and park method where you chew it until you get a tingly sensation um, and then you um, park it in one um, pocket of your cheek until that sensation goes away and then chew it again and move it to the other side. You choose your dose based on the number of cigarettes that you smoke every day. Information for that is again found on the label. Um, if you have problems with your teeth, this is not a good option. And just to remind you that it can be used with bupropion or the nicotine patch. We'll talk about that later. The nicotine lozenge is also an option if you need help for oral cravings. Um, and the dose can be adjusted this easily as well. You're going to choose your initial dose based on the time um, that you have your first cigarette in the morning, whether you go ahead and have that right when you wake up or if it's later. You're going to allow the lozenge to slowly dissolve over 20 to 30 minutes, so you definitely wouldn't want to chew this. It does deliver a slightly higher rate of nicotine um, compared to the gum, so that's something to consider if you haven't had success with the gum in the past. The lozenge could be a good option for you. Um, the last thing I have under here is there's the nicotine spray and the nicotine inhaler. Um, both of these require a prescription. The nasal spray can be irritating. Um, I don't see that used a lot in practice. The nicotine oral inhaler, you can see that in the lower right hand corner. Um, it kind of mimics a cigarette, um, so some people do like that. Again, that does require a prescription. So non-nicotine options. Maybe you're thinking about cessation, but you, you really prefer to avoid nicotine products. So um, here's your options. So bupropion, um, also known by the brand name Zyban or Wellbutrin, helps change how your body responds to nicotine. It's a prescription medicine that comes in a pill form. It is generic. It can delay weight gain. And since it was originally marketed as antidepressant, it could be helpful if you have depression. Before starting it, you definitely want to discuss your medical history with your doctor. Um, if you had an eating disorder or seizure disorder, um, this would be a medication to avoid. You start at a week um, before your quit date, and the side effects I think of is insomnia or dry mouth. Um, the insomnia can be minimized by taking um, your second dose of the medicine um, earlier in the day. So varenicline or Chantix is the other um, prescription pill form that we have. Um, it acts in two ways. It helps block nicotine receptors, but then also partially activates them. So that helps with the withdrawal symptoms. You do start it a week before your quit date. Um, I would like to caution you if you have a mental health disorder, 
definitely need to discuss this with your doctor before starting it. Um, there are some warnings on this medicine about mental health changes, um, including suicide. Um, it's just very important to discuss this with your doctor before starting Chantix. Other side effects, some GI disturbances, as well as sleep disturbances or very vivid dreams have been reported on this medicine. Combination therapy, so combining some of the things we've already talked about, I find this, find this to be the most helpful for people. Um, I kind of like to think of giving you one medicine to provide long-term control during the day, either a long-acting nicotine, um, like the patch, or um, bupropion. And then if you're using the patch or the bupropion, you could use some nicotine replacement therapy for cravings, such as the gum or lozenge. And you do not combine nicotine replacement with Chantix, just like to point that out. So thank you for listening. Talk with your doctor about smoking cessation. Um, you've got all the tools that you need. Go for it.